People who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. But what about people who carry glass phones? I'm Joe Levi, and on this episode of the Pocket Now Power User, we're going to talk about the glass that covers your smartphone, tablet, or wearable. Pocket Now Power User is a series of articles and videos that's aimed at taking the average user giving them information and bringing them up to more of what we would call a power user. Today's topic is glass. Let's jump right in. Almost all of our smartphones, tablets, and even wearables have a screen on them of some sort. Some are large, some are small. They all have different things that they need to account for. Watches, for example, need to be a little bit more rugged and stand up to being knocked against a wall, whereas a phone needs to stand up to the rigors of being dropped into a pocket and taken out several times a day. They all have something in common. You look through them at the display beneath. Each one of those displays has its own unique challenges and its own unique way of overcoming them. So let's talk a little bit about the materials that go into those screens and the benefits and disadvantages of each. First up is plastics. Plastics are relatively inexpensive. They're relatively easy to make, moldable into virtually any shape and have a lot of beneficial properties. Some plastics are even self-healing, though the self-healing ones aren't transparent, so we can't really use them as a screen. Not yet, anyway. The advantage of plastics are, well, endless. They're great, but they're very, very scratchable. Almost everyone back in the classical era of PDAs, you know, Palm, Newton, Pocket PC, almost everyone back then either had a scratched up screen or a screen protector. And they usually had a screen protector over a scratched up screen. There had to be a better product for it, and in fact there was. Glass. Glass is a great thing to look through. After all, we're looking through a glass panel at a screen on our mobile devices. It only makes sense that we'd use the same material that we use to look out into the real world, whether that's from an office building, your home, or even your car. It's glass. Glass is great. It's very hard. It's relatively scratch resistant, but it does have some downsides. It's more expensive than plastic, a little bit more limited and has to be substantially thicker than plastic to accomplish the same job. Scratch resistance is a problem. There are various different manufacturing processes and brand names like Corning's Gorilla Glass 2 and 3 and every version that they'll come up with after that that add some new level of scratch resistance or other feature benefit to their product. Other devices have non-name brand glasses sitting over the top of their display that try and accomplish the same thing. The downside, they're still scratchable, although scratch resistant, and just like the glass in your car door or the glass in your window, they break, they shatter, and it's not good. Sometimes it even causes personal injury. Next up is Sapphire. Now as far as hardness goes, we're told that Sapphire is like number two on the scale of hardness materials, number one being diamond. and. I don't think we're going to see a diamond display anytime soon, though that's not out of the realm of possibility. Sapphire is significantly more expensive than glass, sometimes on a factor of 10 to 30 times more expensive. What does that mean? It means devices that are going to start coming out with sapphire displays are going to come at a premium cost. The advantage is sapphire cannot be scratched, and I'll put that in air quotes, by anything other than another sapphire or a diamond. Hopefully this means it will be the end of our scratches. Realistically, probably not. However, scratch resistance is a very good thing. Sapphire is a very cool line item to see on a spec list, but chances are you're going to be paying for that line item more than you're paying for the benefit of the screen itself. Last up are coatings. Coatings are some kind of an application, some material that is applied on top of a screen. That can take the form of either an oilophobic type coating, which oilophobic means it, it repels the oils that are naturally found all around us. We touch our devices with our fingers. We touch our devices with our palms. We hold our devices up to our faces and get oil against them, which causes smudges and blurs and it, it's just gross. Oilophobic displays aren't friendly to that. It kind of repels the oils and keeps your devices from having smudges and fingerprints and all kinds of stuff on them. There's another benefit to that I'll come back to. Next up are antimicrobial and antibacterial coatings. 
These are coatings that when applied to the screen aren't friendly to bacteria and microbes. Since we have these all around us every day, it would be nice if we could keep our screens nice and clean and not being little petri dishes for growing icky things on them. If you keep your device clean, it's probably not going to be an issue, and this is more one of those things that you just find on the line item to help you feel better about the device without doing all that much. But who knows? Maybe it's a good thing after all. These coatings, whether oilophobic, micro, antimicrobial, or whatnot, they also serve another purpose. Because they are literally repelling things from the screen, when you have stuff, that's the technical term, that would otherwise scratch the screen, these coatings stand as a dividing layer between those items and the display itself. That means when something is pressed against it, it has to go through the coating and down into the actual display to make that scratch. With my Nexus 4, that never happened. That oilophobic coating did a very good job at repelling more than just oil, and everything that would normally have scratched it just slid across the surface and off the other side, and I didn't have a problem with it. Some of the later devices, like the Nexus 5, haven't been quite as slick, and I really, really miss that about the Nexus 4. In this episode of the Pocket Now Power User, we talked about the material that covers your smartphone, tablet, or other wearable. It's only part of the equation. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on part two, where we go into the guts of what's behind that glass. Also, if you like the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up, and while you're at it, why not tell your friends about this series and everything else that we offer on Pocket Now using any one or all of your favorite social media networks. Pocket Now, helping you understand what goes into the devices that are in your pocket. I'm Joe Levi. Thanks for watching.